Welcome to our fifth training video about DM7 series digital mixers from Yamaha. Don't miss the previous episodes introducing the hardware, the GUI, and explaining how to start mixing. Now we're going to look at setting up a basic Dante system with DM7 for those who are new to audio networking. I'm sure most viewers will already have heard of Dante, but for those who are not sure, it's a standard for carrying audio, video, and control data through ordinary IP networks, which Yamaha has been using in many of its digital mixers for over 10 years. It's compatible with thousands of Dante products from literally hundreds of other manufacturers. Yamaha uses it in microphones, I.O. racks, processors, mixers, amplifiers, and powered loudspeakers. And it's also a neat way of getting multi-channel audio and video in and out of computers. You can see the Dante port on the back of each DM7 mixer. There are actually two connections using ruggedized RJ45 terminals called Ethercon. You can use ordinary Cat5 or Cat6 cables or rugged versions, so long as they are rated for carrying gigabit Ethernet or 1000 megabits per second. Let's begin by connecting three devices in a daisy chain. A DM7 and two I.O. racks, making up a typical mixing system. Connect either port of the DM7 to either port of the RIO 3224D2 unit. Then connect the vacant port of the first RIO to either port of the second device. This time for me, an RIO 1608D2. These two cables will be able to carry all the audio and control data between the devices. With the RIO D2s powered on, there are a few settings to check for compatibility. Press the front panel, ink and deck buttons together to awaken the display and press again once or a few times to reach the setup menu. Set the unit ID of one of the RIO to Y001 and the other set to Y002. Up to 24 can be used at the same time with DM7, by the way. Use the front panel encoder to make the setting. Then move to the secondary port and select daisy chain rather than redundant. Redundant mode can be used in larger systems with network switches and additional cabling. Scroll to network mode and I recommend using the auto setting unless you are trained to understand all the numbers and terminology and have a specific reason to do something different. Now let's return to the DM7 and find its Dante settings. Touch the menu icon at the top right of the base screen. Then select I.O. device halfway down the right column. In the Dante setup window, check that setup is selected towards the top left. Here you will see various Dante settings laid out in a similar manner as shown on Rivage PM, CL and QL consoles. First, set the Dante control ID to number one. This is the default and there should always be a console with ID number one in the system. If there is more than one console in the system, each should have a different number or set the ID to off. 
The numbers select which four consoles can control the mic preamps in the RIO units. Next, set the secondary port to daisy chain, as we did on the RIO units. Dante patch by this console allows us to change Dante patching on the screen. So let's keep this. Preferred leader should be on in this case. The console will provide synchronization to the other Dante devices in the system. Bit determines the quality of the audio data in the network. Choose 32 bits if you are happy to use some extra bandwidth in the network. Latency determines how quickly the audio will need to travel through the Dante network. In small systems like this, we can safely select the lowest latency of 0.25 milliseconds. If the console has been given ID number one, these settings will also be transferred to the mounted I.O. units, along with the sample rate to ensure compatibility. And that is why you should always have one console with unit ID number one in the Dante system. Now let's look at the device mount page where we can see up to 24 devices connected. The default setting is for two RIO 3224D2 units and a Dante virtual sound card. If you don't have the same, you should change things manually. Touch one of the units to select an online device. Choose to see the online device list. Then select the new device you wish to mount and touch OK. You should see a connected message and the status of the device will become controllable. Do the same for all the online devices you wish to control or edit the patching for. If there are virtual devices showing, you can select no assign for them so they don't cause you any confusion in the patch grid. To control a device, you can go to the Dante I.O. device window. Select the device on the left side of the screen and touch the right side to access the parameters. Of course, mic preamp controls will also be found in the input channel strips once the patch has been made. For the RIO units, you can see plus 48 volts, gain and GC. That is gain compensation, which you may wish to use when there are two or more consoles sharing the RIO units. Otherwise, make sure it is off because it will fix the audio level coming out of the unit. This HPF is in the RIO unit. It's useful if you need to send the signal to a destination that doesn't have its own high pass filter. But here we also have HPF on the input channels, so we don't need to use this one. Let's move to the Dante patch. Here there is a patch table for input and another for output. Input shows us which of the external devices are transmitting audio to the Dante inputs of the mixer. If you press Auto Setup, a sequential patch will be made from the first mounted devices. If you want to edit the patch, touch one of the sources, then select a different one from any of the transmitting mounted devices. Notice there's a sequential patch option for setting multiple patches in one operation. And there's a patch library to store various 
setups. The Dante Input Patch Library will be really useful if you're regularly switching between different sets of I.O. devices. You'll see that some of the console's Dante inputs are already patched to input channels. The default for DM7 Compact is that Dante inputs 1 to 32 will appear on input channels 17 to 48. For the larger DM7, Dante inputs 1 to 64 will appear on input channels 33 to 96. It's important to understand the two layers of patching involved here. First, the Dante patch from external device to the console's own Dante port. Then, the console's input patch from Dante port to input channel. There's a similar patch concept for the outputs. First patch an output channel to the console's Dante output ports. Then make the Dante output patch for the audio to reach the external device. In the Dante output patch table, the Dante channels sending from the console to the other devices is shown. You'll see this is blank by default, but at least the default settings include a patch from console output channels to the Dante port. We're just about to see that. Select RIO number one and touch the source for output one. You can select any of the 144 Dante outputs to reach the RIO device. Notice that Dante outputs 1 to 48 have the 48 mix buses patched to them, while the matrix outputs are patched to Dante ports 49 to 60, and the stereo outputs after that. Of course, you can change them in the console's patch menu. But here, let's patch mix 1 to 16 to RIO number 1. To apply the complete patch, quickly touch the sequential patch number and type 16, then OK. Then press Dante 1 and confirm. Touch outside the patch pop-up and scroll to check that it's done. And you could patch different Dante outputs to RIO number 2 if you wish. Or you can do the same again. Now the system is ready to pass audio through, though let's just check the input channel controls. Press Home to see the 12 channel view and select a bank of inputs that have Dante patched. Now you can see the gain and plus 48 volt controls. When you enable phantom power, you can see the lights on the front panel of the unit. Press and hold the cell key to identify the source of the input on the RIO unit. Let's connect a mic and a powered speaker to confirm the audio. Raise the gain, raise the fader, increase the mix send level, check the output fader and on status. It's all good. Thanks for following these steps with me. To ensure you know and understand the process of connecting Dante I.O. devices with the console. There's a whole expanding world of networking available to you now. And remember, there are many other devices that can be connected and controlled. 
I'll see you again soon with more training videos about DM7, the digital mixing consoles designed to do more.